There's a lot of talk about sort of ways that bloggers can get out to people, but does it work at all the other way? Like what? Uh, how do bloggers have effect on congressmen and people, you know, making policy decisions? Do they read them and sort of how do they, you know, take it in? Well, I think to an extent. I mean, bloggers have a tremendous effect on what we're hearing and seeing as, as policy makers, but it's a two-way street. Um, and so I think it's, gonna, it's really important. Uh, the more bloggers become really the mainstream, and I think that's actually what's happening now. We've seen the demise of newspapers and traditional television, that the blogging and internet community is really becoming the way that so many more people get their information and track what's happening both in policy and politics. And as that happens more, I think policymakers are paying attention to that. I mean, I know as a policymaker, I certainly am concerned with what's happening uh, in the blogosphere because a lot of my constituents are paying attention to it. Uh, and uh, what are, are there blogs or anything in particular that either you follow or that pay attention to sort of local issues for your, consi for your constituents? Uh oh, now I have to do a <laughs> shout out for, uh, for bloggers. I'll tell you what, I pay attention to Daily Coast, I pay attention to Fire Dog Lake and Open Left, and there are a whole range of them. I sort of search through and sort um, uh, to just, you know, see what the chatter is, see what the conversation is, and, uh, and to learn something. I also occasionally blog myself. Uh, and um, and I know locally we have a really robust network of bloggers in Maryland um, that follow our local politics and follow na national politics. Uh, and one uh, last question on a completely separate subject, but uh, on health care, sort of what do you say to the people who are concerned that this sort of pushing the bill back uh, until after the August recess is either going to weaken the health care bill or is going to, you know, not allow it to pass at all. Like, can you say anything to sort of assuage some fears or to, uh, you know, uh, give some people some confidence or, or what do you think is going to happen? I actually think, I mean, I was one of those who didn't want to uh, push the bill to the, um, pass the August recess, but you know what, we're there now. And, um, and so uh, I think now the challenge is to make sure that we keep a strong voice in there for a robust public option that really is competitive uh, with the um, private insurers and lowers costs. And I think it, the more that we can talk to people who have insurance about uh, the fact that they'll either be able to keep their, their current insurance or if they're not insured, they'll be able to make a choice of a public plan or other um, uh, uh, entries into the market then we'll be more successful in selling this to the American people. I think everybody's concerned about, about cost, and what I'm concerned with is that the uh, insurance interest, the pharmaceutical interest, and all of those who are stacked up against um, both the public option but any kind of um, health care reform don't win at the end of the day. And so I'm actually looking forward to September. Um, looking forward to getting back to work in the Congress after all of the members of Congress have heard from their constituents, pro and con, and we're going to get back to the business of the people. And I'm really convinced that we are going to get a strong health care uh, reform bill and that it will include a robust public option uh, that competes with private insurers. All right, great. Thank Thanks. you very much.